experiences that you have given to us in my <clears throat> lifetime. Many wonderful things have happened that I feel like the Lord has prepared me from the beginning to be born of the, in the countryside in Japan. There are plenty of time to, to expand <laughs> My thinking, and uh, I became <coughs> quite a thinking person. Uh, my father was a very intelligent person, but he became a farmer, being the only son with the four sisters in a farm. If uh, he was uh, one of the most intelligent one, and <coughs> if he went to the higher education. My grandfather uh, thought that he would never come back to the farm, and so I just couldn't uh, continue on. And yet he was able to live a very progressive farming life and became a right-hand man in the farming for the governor. So whenever <clears throat> governors uh, would ask question, you ask, uh, Kinzo of Queen, which was my father's name. And so he had a, a quite a wonderful life, I would say, and believed in the children's education, so he was uh, able to give me a good education and all my br six brothers as well. But anyway, <clears throat> coming from the farm, uh, I was sent to the uh, private uh, girls' school for six years. And uh, uh, in those times, I have to travel with a bicycle to the, where the streetcar was, and then transfer to streetcars, and then go to school. Uh, so I had a lot of time to think, look into the nature and, and uh, observe many things. And in those times, I used to, especially when my grandfather's uh, brother died. My grandfather and grandparents died when I was too young to think of those things, but then my, his uh, older brother lived much longer and then he died. And at that point, I thought, and then even before that, that is life end at death, then why? What is life? And those were the questions in my mind, and I'm probably I shared as before. And the Lord said in the Bible, which I didn't know anything about, and he ask and you shall receive, not and it shall be opened unto you. So this question kept in my mind all through teenage time. Never the answer came. Uh, literature or philosophical book will never answer precisely what the purpose of life, let alone life before, let alone life after. The Lord, in his uh, wisdom, as uh, patriarchal blessings, it, it was not by chance that you have come to know the truth. Truly, the Lord guided me, and I am so grateful for that. I was college-bound, but yet, just before an entrance exam, something pulled me back, pulled me back. And I decided not to take the test. And it was a total surprise to me, my teachers, as well as my parents. And yet, it was the great wisdom of our Heavenly Father. If I did go to 
college. I could have been a Roman slave. <laughs> Quite a leader among, I was a student body president and everything else. But I didn't. And my mother said, well, not doing anything is not good. Well, why don't you go to school preparing for your marriage? The marriage was far from me in my mind, and uh, especially in the way, the Japanese way that they used to do. So I chose to go to the, you know, the sewing school that I saw on the way my school to my school. And there, every Wednesday morning, there was two foreigners, and one was a Japanese student, uh, came to teach something. To this day, I can't remember what they were te teaching there, but I think it was English that they were teaching. But I can't remember a thing about that. But one thing I remember, I told you before probably, they had this uh, American uh, person. They didn't say they were missionaries. We're talking about life before, the life here, life hereafter. And then a, a Japanese uh, person and was writing in a big blackboard, life before, life here, life hereafter. And that caught me, my attention. However, there was nothing inviting to church or anything like that. But they did sell the uh, music uh, program coming up, the Melody Man. And I enjoyed music, drama, everything, all those things. So I bought a ticket and went. And that's where I witnessed the most beautiful music presentation. And then after the award, we went to get the autograph. And, and that's the time I in, spoke in English because I was excelled in English at that time. And then I asked a very typical question. Why do you call yourself elder when you don't feel, look so old? <laughs> and they answered it. And then for the first time, ex uh, invited me to come to church. By then I knew that there was a church. And I said, where is the church? As a matter of fact, we are renting the place called Adachi uh, Sewing School. And that was the sewing school that I went every day. Was that a coincidence? I'm sure, retrospectively, it was by plan. From the first day on, I was totally caught, and there was no looking back. It was the most wonderful thing that I've ever encountered. The missionary who came and sat beside me and introduced himself, I am Elder Phillips and extended his hand. That was quite chubby, but warm hands. <laughs> and I can still remember the warmth of that. And then this sister who was teaching, those days the Sunday school was during in the morning. And then the sacrament meeting was uh, missionary's quarter in the evening. And uh, she was getting everything ready, so I, decided to help her and this and that. And I'm, I'm used to those things. And she said to herself later, told me, I will never let her go out of my sight. It was a wonderful, wonderful situation that Nagoya Branch had. And that's the way I was brought into conversion. However, my parents wouldn't sign Missionaries came to my home, but he wouldn't sign. 
So I waited until I was 20. It so happened that Saturday, usually the baptism day, was on my birthday, on the 20th birthday. I went on my own with the freedom and went to the Kiso River. Beautiful, they call it the Japan Rhine. And that there I was able to be baptized. And I never stopped. But even before that, the church was able to, the branch was able to give me all kinds of responsibilities. Whoever is willing, they were able to use. I'm a believer of someone who is willing, we need to use them. Participation is the key. Anyways, since then, the Lord has guided me to fulfill a mission. Difficult time was there, but still it. And then be able to pursue education, which was important. And I was able to come to the United States. Even graduated from UCLA. Yeah. That he, my husband, according to my husband, it's an inferior school <laughs> than University of Utah. That's okay if he thinks that way. That's fine. <laughs> but anyway, and then the marriage was important, uh, knowing the gospel, and then of course the Lord was able to prepare to be able to find my wonderful husband. And that was almost the end of my school. Until then, Pedro of Blessing said, you will be married to one of your own people. And that was a guiding light in my case. Not everybody, but my case. And then we were able to be able to be married for time and all eternity. And he said, I married my enemy. <laughs> of course, we fought in you know, Japan, and I was in Japan when the war was away going on. I saw the Nagoya burning. <laughs> B-29, we saw every day almost towards the end of the war. However, I was too young to know, never had a feeling of hatred or anything, and I am grateful for that. And then, uh, be able to raise our four sons, be able to go to, on a mission to Japan's central mission. That has been the most wonderful experience of our lives together. And you have added tremendous joy and happiness to our life. And uh, even after 50 some years later, to be able to be together with you, it is beyond uh, whatever. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you for being here. Now we are ed heading towards probably the other world, <laughs> more closer than 50 years ago. And we keep attending funeral service. The last uh, Monday, well, went to the uh, Senator Orrin Hatch's uh, funeral service. We got to know him in a political arena, and what a wonderful person he was. And then he talks about the family, even what he has accomplished a lot of things, and yet uh, the, all the children sang song. He was a songwriter. You know, and he, uh, the song they sang was No Empty Chairs. The families are important. Mission families are important. And he, the song goes, look around our family circle. Feel the love that we all share. Life is sweet and so complete with each loved one gathered here. Thank you. There are no empty chairs at our table, no empty feelings inside. When all those we love are together, here side by side. Mission family, 
your personal family. And you can see Facebooks. We see some of you in the Facebooks and always talk about your families and how wonderful it is. And thank you for your examples of being a wonderful parent, being wonderful parents to your children. And your parents were very special to have you, to be able to see you so well uh, being uh, grown and grown in the gospel and continue your trek back to our Heavenly Father's presence. I know that God lives. Jesus is our Savior. I am so grateful for the knowledge. <coughs> and it was given to me by the gift of the Holy Ghost. That testimony still burned within myself. And thank you for adding to that testimony because your lives, well lived, continue to live, is the testimony to me. And thank you. And our children are doing okay. Some are wayward, <laughs> wayward as far as the gospel plan is concerned. Some of you may have, but we tried our best and yet still some is not and that we're continuing to pray that they will be able to desire, humble themselves and be able to return to the gospel living. Our challenges are here. Challenges are for us. How to overcome is our challenges and hope and pray that we may be able to return to our Father in Heaven place as an entire family. Thank you so very much for tonight. And I say these things humbly as thanking my wonderful husband too. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate my wife. She's the best wife I have. <laughs> um, just uh, some reporting to do. You know that uh, near the end of our mission, we opened up a number of areas uh, for missionary work. Uh, you remember that um, we started up um, there by Kanazawa, and there was just Kanazawa and Komatsu at that time, branches. And then we went up to Toyama, and opened a branch there, and then came down to Fukui, and opened up branches there. Is there anyone here that served in that area? Okay, one, two, all right. Um, that's kind of the Hokuriku area, it's called. And, um, you know, it, it, the start of the branches are such that we can't afford to have new buildings. And so we rent it. areas uh, or rent the parts of buildings to start holding our uh, churches there. And so uh, those areas now, though, if you look up on uh, your computers and so forth, you'll see wonderful beautiful ward, uh, yeah, branch and ward buildings now. In Fukui, there's a branch building. Toyama has a, that is a ward building, and Toyama has a ward building. Kurashiki was opened up, and a city of 350,000 people that didn't have missionaries, and so that was an open up. Now they have a beautiful meeting house or chapel to, um, down south of Nagoya, we open up, but it, but it still doesn't have a building there. And uh, I don't know why, but hopefully, uh, even though it's a uh, Kensho, um, capital of a prefecture, they still don't have a building. But in Nagoya, we opened up five new branches 
all at one time. And all of them had beautiful buildings. Kyoto, um, that was one of the buildings that were built by the uh, building missionaries. And, and we have two branches there now. Akashi, which is just west of Kobe, now has a beautiful uh, ward building. Kakogawa, another area just west of Akashi, has a, a new building. And then over on Shikoku, the island of Shikoku, uh, Marugame uh, has a, a wonderful building. And, and then as you go north in Tottori Prefecture, Tottori doesn't have a building, but Yonago does. And so, and Yonago has a large building, and they have 150 to 200 people meeting there each Sunday. And then, uh, before we just left, Nihama on Shikoku and Imabari on Shikoku were established. And I believe that Nihama has an old hospital, a small hospital building that uh, was purchased and that they're using. Imabari does not have a building there. They just use a rented facility. Nara has a beautiful chapel. And Nara then, has two. Two now. Yes, and then um, Ichinomiya, which is between Nagoya and Gifu, has a beautiful new building there too. When I say new, um, it's then been there a few years, but to us, you know, it's new. And so the, the church is progressing very well throughout the Japan central area. And so, of course, because of the labors of the, the missionaries here, all of you, all of this was uh, able to come about uh, because of the labors of the missionaries. And then you remember, because of the Expo 70 and some of the, the uh, events that happened there in our area, that uh, many, many people came into the church. In fact, uh, there were averaging over a hundred every month. Today, in those missions, they're lucky to have 10 or 15 in a year. And so, uh, well, in a year? Uh, in, in, uh, in, in Japan, there's very few now. They don't have very many. They have about 70 in a year. So that's what we used to have in a month and that uh, you were able to have that experience, which I think was wonderful. But at any rate, <clears throat> I just wanted to give that report on uh, the work that's going on now because the work that you did back in that time. Yes, a question. Oh, Brother, when we were in Japan, 70% um, or 60% of the new converts were Chinese students who then go back to China. And we actually saw Chinese missionaries in Canada who had come because somebody was baptized in Japan or in Australia or New Zealand and went back to China and their siblings read their Book of Mormons and said, you gotta go on a mission too. So the baptisms now, although there are not many, they are infiltrating into China and the Chinese are getting the gospel. Wonderful. Yeah, well, they have a lot of people there that they can convert, can't they? <laughs> a few billion people. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, those were quite, uh, that, those were quite early on that they were built. I was talking about the ones that came about near the last of our mission. Okay. Yes. Another question. Is, was there a question back there? No? We just wanted to ask you to repeat her question because we couldn't hear it. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, but we got the gist of it now. The question that you had, they, they didn't, wasn't able to hear. What was the question again? Oh, you can talk about Okazaki, Kaneohashi, those places where they have 
Oh, yes, yes. Well, the, the older buildings, uh, of course, we had Abeno, Okamachi, uh, Kyoto building was built, the Kobe building was built while we were there. Uh, Kanazawa was being built, Nagoya was being built, and so forth. But I, I, was, I was mentioning you knew. Uh, yeah, they, they had it a little bit later on, but before the ones that I was talking about. Yes. So the church is growing, and uh, we, we can feel satisfaction that because of your work, the church uh, really progressed during that period of time, and especially because of um, the number of converts that came into the church uh, during your period of time has not been duplicated uh, since that time. However, I believe the church now has 127,000 members and something like 200 um, buildings. So it's infiltrated uh, in Japan quite a bit. And we could be satisfied because of that. Yes, another question. When we were in Japan, they said that only the Catholic Church had more buildings in Japan than the LDS Church. The LDS Church was the second largest property owner among Christian churches. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. That, that's true. I, I had heard that also. Um, anything else there? Oh, yes. <coughs> The Chinese um, uh, apartment for the those employees that worked at the Chinese embassy there. Uh -huh. okay, they built them beautiful buildings. That's where they housed two Tokyo missions who will be housed in there. This is she speaking of the uh, new temple area where the temple, uh, the Tokyo temple is and the parking garage, and but they have a building right adjacent to it that uh, now houses the office buildings that were a little bit away, you know, that was a long block away from there before. I think they sold that and uh, moved into the new facility that houses all the uh, offices and uh, so forth in the mission home there. Yes, uh, one, yes, two questions. Kept the old building, yes, and or okay. changed that to apartments for their equivalency, the temple presidency. Oh, so they'll you. keep that. Okay. Hunter May? I was surprised to hear you say Nada. Uh, so do you get a call to Nada? Is that a vacation period, or do you actually do Dendo now? <laughs> oh, it's hard Dendo. <laughs> hard Dendo. <laughs> Yes, they have, um, right in the city itself, they have a branch, and then just a, a little ways from there on the, the train that, that goes southeast from there, um, they have a, another branch, which is very close to the train station. Is that Yao? Pardon? Is that Yao? No, that Yao is quite a ways away. Oh. This is really close. The one train stop. So, yes, but at any rate, uh, I also want to just talk about temples a, a little bit. Um, whenever they announce at conference time uh, new temples and so forth, I'm waiting for the Osaka temple. <laughs> and um, it didn't come this last time, and I've talked to the uh, temple uh, department people about when that will, will be built. They said, well, it's on the schedule. <laughs> but they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't give me a specific time. But uh, surely, you know, Osaka, the, the Kansai area, which includes Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka, and those areas, there's 17 to 18 million people living there. 
It's the second largest, of course, in Japan, but it's also the eighth or tenth largest in the world. And so yeah, I let them know that at the church. <laughs> and we certainly need a temple there. And uh, hopefully next conference they'll announce a temple there. <laughs> How many members do they have in that area? In that area, I'm not mm. sure, to tell you the truth. Um, mm. uh, I would assume, mm. let's see, when we left there, there was uh, 4,700. And now I would assume that there's probably getting closer to 30,000, 40,000. But oh. I'm not sure. Oh. I'm not sure. I know, in Cleveland, you get... <laughs> Our son lives in Cleveland, Kirtland State, and the Kirtland area is a historical area, and all other historical area has temples, almost all, even though it is very small. Is that Scott? When is Kirtland? Oh, we were thinking, finally, they say Cleveland is close to Kirtland. <laughs> They don't know where in that Cleveland area because they have Kirtland in those areas. And so uh, I don't think they meant that the, the church took over the existing Kirtland temple or not. <laughs> yes, another question. Reverend Mike asked this on occasion, but you were so young when you got called up How old were you when you entered Japan as a mission president? 38. Mm, 38 until 41. Okinawa Temple is in the process of finishing. So I imagine the church is thinking the people need to be close to the temple. And that's the reason the Okinawa took first. Of course, there is the American, you know, many people in Okinawa as well. Well, they, they had Sapporo because that was way up north, and now they have one going to be built in Okinawa. Um, and and uh, Hokkaido is a big island. They made two states. Can you imagine? It's a kind of a sideway. It's about uh, how many miles? 680 miles or something like that. <laughs> it's an amazing division. So that's all. Oh, uh, uh, talking about temples, uh, I had the opportunity to be a cedar at the um, Draper Temple, and I go there every Tuesday from 12 to 3, and Wednesday from 3 to 6, and do ceilings there, which is a great privilege for myself and uh, those that work there. Um, I started out at the Jordan River Temple back in 1995. Then we went on our mission in 96 to the Japan Missionary Training Center. And then, as we reported before, we had the opportunity of going up to Sapporo as intermission president. And intermission president is different from mission president. They still had a mission president, but he was in the United States at that time because of health reasons. So when we had district or state, well, district uh, conferences where they would um, um, sustain the district president, they would use the, the name of the, the mission president that was at home because of health reasons and not the intermission presence. So I was never, a, mission president twice. I was only mission president once, but I was interim mission president twice. Yes. And it was wonderful when we went back um, to the Japan Missionary Training Center, finished there, and on our way home, Elder Penninger asked us, oh, when are you going home? Um, Tuesday, that was a Friday. He says, oh, by the way, could you stay a, a few weeks? For, uh, to, because the president had to go home. And we said yes, of course, and it ended up five months. And so we lived out of the suitcase for that period of time. 
about you got a call from Elder Haight, wasn't it? Elder Haight. He made a he mistakenly called us. He was trying to call somewhere else. And he says, Oh, I understand you. Pardon? Um, the president is Elder Ballard. President Ballard. No, no, it was Elder Haight. Elder Haight that called us by mistake and said, Oh, I understand that you sent all your clothing and everything home. And so, why don't you just go out and buy some clothing? That was wintertime clothing, now it was summer. So, buy you some uh, summer clothing. <laughs> Yeah. If we would have done that, we would have been excommunicated from the church. <laughs> but at any rate, we we had some wonderful times. We had, um, as I didn't think I was so young at that time, but I think that the, the reason I was called as mission president is because uh, I was pretty well early on that I was on a mission there as a missionary, and I was a little bit older and so forth. And so the, the choices that they had were kind of slim, so they called me. <laughs> but, um, I'm grateful to be with you. It's always a wonderful opportunity for us to feel of your spirit and to be in your, in, uh, your um, what do you call that? Presence? <laughs> yes, presence. Thank you. And uh, the Lord bless you. The gospel is true. It's always been true. And I am grateful for that. And I bear that with testimony to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.